Thank you. First, I want to start out by thanking uh, the Alliance for Regenerative Medicine, in particular, uh, Michael and Maury. I've been here now four years, and to see the growth of this meeting is really exciting. And for CDI, it's been a really good meeting. Uh, we are a public company. This presentation may contain forward-looking statements. Uh, we refer you to our website uh, for more detail on that. We're a different kind of company than the other companies that have presented at this meeting. So I want to take you to the very premise, and that is regenerative medicine is about the human cell and harnessing the power of the human cell for therapeutic purpose. The human cell is our basic building block, but that cell is not widely available. The only way to get human cells today is to harvest them. And Harvesting cell, harvested cells, mo most of the regenerative medicine companies here are, use MSCs or some other progenitor cell. The problem with harvested cells is, number one, you don't really know what they, you know, you don't, they're not specced. You're, they're harvested. So you don't have a, it, it turns out that a lot of times we don't understand the mechanism of an action. The second one is scalability of manufacture that these cells do not widely replicate and they're difficult to replicate. So the problem is the lack of access to human cells. And what CDI is about is solving that problem. We manufacture human cells. We do it to precise specification in industrial quantity. And we'll talk about how we do that and we'll talk about some of the implications today for therapeutics. But our goal as a company is to set that industry standard. And today I'll give you some information that may lead you to believe whether we have or whether we have it. Like I said, we manufacture human cells, standardized human cells to precise specification. It's a manufacturing process. And we have a growing suite of products in the marketplace today generating real revenue. We think there's some very large markets around it. We'll talk about those in more detail in a little bit. But a few indications of our leadership are 179 uh, customers in the trailing 12 months last quarter, 19 of 20 top biopharma purchase our cells. We have over 800 patents and patent applications. You need a big patent suite in order to ensure our customers that they have freedom to operate. And our revenues are growing rapidly, and we have a high gross product margin. Let me say that again. Our revenues, we have a company with revenues, is growing rapidly, and we have achieved a high gross margin. Now, let me walk you through how we manufacture these cells. What's our process? We use the latest in stem cell technology, induced pluripotent stem cells. And there's a, it's a two-step manufacturing process, originally developed by our founder, Jamie Thompson, who published the first human pluripotent stem cell paper on November 27, 2007, along with uh, another researcher, Shinya Yamanaka, who many of you in the audience, I'm sure, have heard of. Our process is step one manufacture a pluripotent stem cell. This is a stem cell that can become naturally any cell in the human body, okay? And the way we do that is we start with a standard doctor's office blood draw. We add proprietary, episomal, uh, proprietary method using episomal vectors, and those cells reprogram. The, the episome creates the proteins that causes the cell to reprogram back to something similar to an embryonic stem cell. And the beauty of this, this cell as a basis of a manufacturing process is two things. Pluripotency, every cell in the human body, but also when you have an IPS line, indefinite replication. So we, our starting material of our manufacturing process, step one, replicates indefinitely. And this process allows us to make an IPS, a pluripotent stem cell line, from anyone. Anyone in this room gives us a tube of blood with the proper consent. And we can make your stem cell line and then put that into our, that stem cell line into, your, into our manufacturing process. The second step of the process is you, take, you start with that pluripotent stem cell line, some of the cells from that, and you put it through a series of culture conditions. Now we've done this under tight industrial control, every step tightly controlled, and at the end we manufacture human cells to precise specification. Let's take cardiomyocytes as an example. It's about a two-week process. At the end of the two weeks, 
We get cardiomyocytes, and those cardiomyocytes, before they go out the door at CDI, have to meet our detailed specs. It's an internal spec sheet of 40 pages. And those are measurable items. Because, and what we want to do is make sure that every batch, every vial of our product meets that spec. Now, it, now there's trillions of cells in the human body, so it, it's not enough to meet spec. You have to be able to scale the manufacturer, and that's why we talk about we make billions of cells, because that's the relevant number in order to have real human biology. In, in. Now, I'm a businessman. Why are we excited about this? It's the product opportunity. We can make off this manufacturing platform our, at our production facility in Madison, Wisconsin. The opportunity for us is every cell type in the human body on the y-axis by every person on the planet on the x-axis. As a businessman, this excites me. That's a giant product opportunity. And the even more exciting part is very large markets. We see, we talk about three of them. The first market is for cells for research. If you can have standardized cells, then they become a good research tool to go screen your drugs against, go test compounds for chemical safety. And actually, they're even used in the food industry today. Okay, that's our first market. The second one is stem cell banking. And that is creating large banks of stem cell lines, both for research use and potentially for therapeutic use so that people, so that we can start looking at the diversity of people. Okay, that's, a, that's also a very large market according to our market research. And then the third one, the one that this meeting's primarily about is the therapeutic use of cells. And we'll talk about it, but we bring a unique value proposition to the therapeutic side because remember, we're manufacturing cells to precise specification as opposed to harvesting what you can get out of the body. So let's talk about our market rollout strategy. I'll, I'll spend a couple minute, a minute on where we sit in each of them, but our strategy has been very straightforward. Launch, build the manufacturing platform and launch first into in vitro research, research on the cells in a dish. And the reason we went there first is you had, Every manufacturing, you had to solve all the manufacturing pro, uh, problems of standardization, quality, and volume. But I didn't have to worry about the problem of the Federal Drug Administration blessing it or not. And so we launched that first. We've been selling that pro, the products. Our company's a decade old. But we've, been, we've launched those products beginning at the beginning of 2010. Our first product was cardiomyocytes. And today we have a cash flow a cash generating business of selling cells into the research industry. And the reason they're buying our cells is that our cells are predictive, are more predictive than other preclinical models of clinical response. So you can put basically human biology in a dish, test your compounds on it, and see if it, and see how it may respond in the clinic. Now, we believe that we are currently the leader in this in this field, in this, in this market, and a little bit of data, we'll talk about uh, if we have time a little later, but the, the very simple data is our trailing 12 months, we did $13.3 million of revenue. We did $2.7 million in deferred revenue. Uh, perhaps you could call that $16 million in business. And our next, and the two competitors that, who try to do what we do, had um, a half a million dollars of revenue in 2013 in that neighborhood. So we're outselling our competitors 20 to 25 times. Um, and our game plan there is to be first in the marketplace, set the standard, make it, have pharma standardize on our platform. The second market we went after is stem cell banking. And again, we believe we're moving in the position of leadership there. Um, we have very large contracts we're doing over 3,250 stem cells from, uh, we're making, taking two, three, over 3,250 people, making their stem cell lines and, put, and banking them or in some cases taking them onto the final tissue stage. I, we don't believe there's another company uh, in the world. Um, and I also, at this meeting, want to make special thanks. I see some of our friends from 
California Institute of Regenerative Medicine is here. We're doing 3,000 of those for them, so thank you. Um, but the third market, and we always felt this was the big opportunity, is cells for therapeutic use. Make cells, the therapeutic spec, and, uh, and instead of harvesting them, make sure that they meet a spec that has therapeutic benefit. And our, our approach there is a partnership approach, and I'll explain that in a little more detail in a minute. So here is some of CDI's therapeutic candidates that we have talked about publicly. Cardiomyocytes for myocardial infarction, heart failure, even for muscular dystrophy. We, have, we make cardiac progenitors. This is the cell that makes every cell in the, in the, heart's, in, in the human heart um, or becomes. That's, a, that's potentially a product for myocardial infarction. I cell neurons. We make cortical forebrain neurons to spec. These could be useful in stroke, Alzheimer's, epilepsy, autism. We make I cell dopaminergic neurons. Okay? These are the floor plate. The, the, the neurons in the substantia nigra that seem to be, when they fail, seem to be associated with Parkinson's. We can make new ones, and we can make those autologously. Uh, astrocytes, helper cells in the brain, hepatocytes for liver failure, hematopoietic progenitors, that's sort of the holy grail. We, you might be able to treat all those patients that can't get uh, stem cell treatment for leukemia now with this. We make endothelial cells, we make skeletal myoblasts. Every one of these cell types are potentially, if you can figure out the, mechanism, the, the delivery mechanism and the mechanism to make them integrate, are potentially therapeutic. Our, our strategy around therapeutics is to partner with the people in this room. Okay, we can develop cells to, to precise specification. We can scale the manufacture. We can manufacture CMG, CGMP. So we can solve that scale-up problem that uh, yesterday morning, uh, Gil and Donna were talking about. We can solve that. We have the systems in place. What we're, part, what we're looking for from our partners is the expertise in preclinical study design, regulatory compliance, IND filing, sales and marketing, all the things that a classic biotech or drug uh, company does. And we're out actively today partnering this because this is the way to push those those cell types, think of them as biologic compounds made perhaps, into the clinic. Um, now I'm gonna quickly go through our other products. Okay, this is our tools product. This is our current portfolio of tools, tools products. We make cardiomyocytes, endothelial cells, neurons, hepatocytes, dopaminergic neurons, hematopoietic progenitor cells, cardiac progenitors, astrocytes, nociceptors, pain neurons, um, skeletal myoblasts, and many other cell types that we haven't disclosed. Every one of these cell types is in a customer's hands today, working with them, testing them. We, when we develop a cell, we develop in conjunction with, other, uh, with our customers. Then we have this product extension that's also in the marketplace called MyCell. MyCell is, we take, the iCell products are all from one sort of generic individual, if there is such a thing. MyCell is, we make IPS lines from multiple people, people that our customers are, have of interest, or in CIRM's case, the 3,000 customers, the 3,000 people they are interested in having genetic disease, disease, to learn about genetic disease in. And then we can make the same cells, the same cardiomyocytes, neurons, hepatocytes, et cetera. So our product extension is to go out that X access to, every, to, to get us genetic diversity. Cells are not a product by themselves. You must surround it with all the features and indicia that make it easy to use in the customer's hands. And we do that. Warranty. We, oh, the most important one is we ship the cells cryopreserved. That allows us to inventory the product when we make it and allows our customer to use it when they want and inventory it. In addition to that, we have over 800 patents. That's a product feature because when the customer uses our product, they know that they have freedom to operate under our 800 patents. Um, as I said before, we believe we have the, we, we're the leader in the field. As I'm watching the clock tick down, I won't uh, re repeat what I said there. We also think that we are in a leadership position in stem cell banking. And I want to highlight something on this list is our patent position on this. 
Um, the methodology that is being, becoming widely adopted, the episomal method, is patented by a CDI. Um, our customer at CERM, for instance, has access to that patent. Um, we also recently received a patent on the automated production of IPS lines. It is going to be very difficult to make large IPS lines, if not impossible, unless you use automation. Our facility in, in Novato uses automation, okay? And we, we just were issued the patent on that for the United States. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on intellectual property, uh, other than to say 800 patents over 640 years of stem cell experience in our company, all with the goal of making sure our customers have access to this technology because they, by buying from us, they have use of the patents. Uh, we have a proven team of executives. Uh, sometimes I like to jokingly say that we're the oldest team in biotech. But proven people, everybody has 20 plus years of experience in the field. And of course, our chief scientific officer, Jamie Thompson, who, who, who launched the stem cell revolution with his uh, human, human embryonic stem cell discoveries. Um, I'm not going to spend with this audience a lot of time on the financial review other than to say this is a scalable, positive business. So I just want to conclude again by saying thank you to ARM and the, the, this meeting's gotten better every year and I think it's indicative of the growth of our industry. So thank you very much.